Which magnesium is best for sleep? Today, I'm gonna go over two main topics. The first one is, which magnesium supplement is best for sleep, is gonna give you the best quality of sleep? And number two, which foods are going to help you be able to sleep? So those are the two topics that I'm gonna go over today. And this is a continuation of a topic about nutrient deficiency, the five nutrient deficiencies that cause insomnia. Let me remind you and let's dive right in. This is a quick overview of what we previously discussed in the previous podcast. So trouble sleeping, and there's five main nutrient deficiencies that can cause insomnia. One is for trip a deficiency of tryptophan, magnesium, calcium, vitamin D, and other B vitamins. So today I'm going to go over specifically magnesium. Okay, so let's skip through magnesium. Okay, so to start off, how much magnesium do we actually need uh, for for you know for the human body? Well, the recommended dietary allowance from the U.S. the United States National Institutes of Health says that for men, nineteen to thirty, you need four hundred milligrams per day of magnesium. Now, if you're above 31, you need 422 milligrams of magnesium per day. For women, 19 to 30, you need 310 milligrams per day. And if you're above 31, you need 320 milligrams per day. Now, if you're pregnant, you need 350 to 360 milligrams per day. And if you're lactating, you need 310 to 320 milligrams per day. Okay. Now, what are these requirements? These are general requirements. Are they absolute? No. You need to speak with a practitioner who is versed in nutrition. Um, no, most physicians, uh, even though you are, I am legally required to tell you to go check with your physician before you take any supplements, okay? Before you do any of these uh, uh, recommendations that I give and my team gives to our patients, you need to talk with your physician. That's just a legal disclaimer I need to say. Does it, do they really know about nutrition and uh, how much magnesium you need? Most of them do not, okay? But this is the generalized, okay? Um, there are people that take more and people that take less, but you need to be supervised by someone who knows what they're talking about and not just knows who, what they're talking about, but has experience, experience in treating patients using magnesium supplements, okay? So- Magnesium supplements. There's many types of magnesium. Which one is the best one for you, right? That's probably that's the number one question you tuned in for. Well, let me first start off by there's three main ones that can help with insomnia. One is magnesium. MG is short for magnesium. Magnesium glycinate. It's also called bisglycinate. Magnesium bisglycinate. Uh, magnesium taurate is number two. And magnesium L-threonate. Okay. These are the three main forms of magnesium supplements. Okay. Supplements. I want to emphasize that that can help you with your sleep if you're having problems with sleep. So I broke it down to three main categories uh, to distinguish between the three. And so that you can talk with your practitioner, your healthcare practitioner, which one is best for you at the moment. Okay. Absorption uh, magnesium glycinate and magnesium taurate, they both have high absorption, which is really good. Uh, magnesium L-threonate has moderate to high, but the benefit, here is the benefit difference of magnesium L-threonate. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. This is a synthetic vitamin, synthetic created in a laboratory specifically to cross the blood-brain barrier. These two um, magnesium glycinate and magnesium taurate do not automatically pass through the blood brain barrier. So that's the advantage of magnesium threonate. Okay. Digestive tolerance. If, you, if you've taken magnesium supplement, you've probably experienced some GI upset, diarrhea, bloating, gas, and so forth, right? Um, cause there's a specific form magnesium citrate that actually acts as a laxative, right? Um, that is not one of the ones for insomnia as you can see. So all three of these you can see are gentle on the stomach. So these three are going to be gentle on the stomach. Now, is that the same case for everybody? No, it's case dependent. It's individualized. That's why you need to work with a practitioner who knows, who has experience with thousands of patients like our clinic, 
We've treated thousands of patients and we still are treating patients. Okay. This information is not from patients we treated 20 years ago and we are just teaching now. No, 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 no. We've been treating for over 20 years and we're still treating. Okay. That's our, that's my team. Okay. Now sleep benefits. Here's the difference of these magnesium supplements. Okay. So magnesium glycinate, what is the main difference? It's first of all, it's excellent. Magnesium, short answer right now, magnesium glycinate. If you're looking just for improved quality of sleep, magnesium glycinate is your choice. Okay. It's excellent. It has a calming effect, muscle relaxation, and this form of magnesium is attached to a, an amino acid called glycine. Glycine, this amino acid aids in deep sleep. That's why this is your number one choice. You would typically want to start here in regards to helping your insomnia. Okay. Magnesium torate, it's good. It's not excellent. It's good. It has a calming and supports heart health. Um, it decreases anxiety related insomnia. So if you have insomnia with anxiety and palpitations, magnesium torate could be a good choice. Okay. But it's not excellent in the sleep benefit compared to magnesium glycinate. And the last one, magnesium L3 and 8. It is also good, not excellent, okay? Uh, it supports brain health, improves cognitive-related insomnia. So if you have brain fog, groggy brain in the morning, um, then you might want to consider magnesium L3 and 8 because it can cross the blood-brain barrier, which can also help cognitive thinking, okay? Alzheimer's, right? And those, if you if you have some of those going on, uh, memory loss, magnesium L3 and 8 could be your choice. Now, between, okay, you, th you might be thinking, well, if magnesium L3 and 8 can cross the blood-brain barrier, why not go with this one? Because it should work faster on the brain, right? Because it's the brain that regulates the sleep, right? Well, the downside is that there's a high cost, right? It's higher cost um, compared to magnesium glycinate. So that may be a hindrance for you. It may not be, but I just wanted to give you the benefits. So if you're taking a supplement, you, the choice for me and for our patients is very clear to start off with magnesium glycinate, okay? Uh, before I move on to the next. So that's part one, the topic number one. Um, I wanted to also emphasize me going over this, I am not suggesting you take this forever, for years and years to come. Supplements are short-term solutions. They do not create long-term results. They create short-term results. So if you're only looking for short-term results, then supplements is the way to go. And you don't care about if you don't care about if you sleep great for months and years, you don't care about that. You just want to sleep today, you want to sleep this week. Supplements is a great good go go to okay but if you're like our patients who come to our clinic and want restorative longevity they want long term results they want to actually fix the problem the root cause these do not fix the root cause okay they don't fix the root cause just fyi um general inf information so food is always going to be your number one source of nutrition to fix the root cause okay so uh, general information about food, nuts, seeds, legumes, and leafy greens are the richest source of magnesium, okay? Just if you want to, if you want to just a general, uh, it's like a general category of food, this is it. Nuts, seeds, legumes, and leafy greens, okay? Eat more of those in your dinner time, right? Take away the animal protein, just eat vegetarian during your, your vegetarian during your dinner time. Now, cooking methods, it's close to pay attention. When you boil vegetables, it does decrease the amount of magnesium available from the vegetables. Um, now, when it comes to seeds and nuts, roasting them actually maintains. It preserves the magnesium. So when you eat roast uh, nuts, seeds and nuts, you actually want to eat them roasted, not salted, unsalted, roasted. Okay. Vegetables, boiling them, you gotta you can eat it raw, okay? You can eat a salad dinner time, right? Um, if you boil them, blanch them very quickly. Okay. So what are the foods? So we got magnesium foods. So again, you know, vegetarian stuff is going to have the most magnesium. Some animal based uh, products will have some magnesium. 
So remember, you need between about 250 to 350, just in, on average, 250 milligrams to 350 milligrams of magnesium per day. Some people need more if you have insomnia. Okay, so salmon, three ounces of salmon only gives you 26 milligrams. One cup of milk only gives you 24. Milk contains tryptophan and uh, magnesium, but both milk contains very low tryptophan, very low magnesium. It is not a good source to help you sleep. It actually also hurts you while you're trying to get the benefits. Chicken breast, own, three ounces of chicken breast only has 22 milligrams of magnesium. So you can see, not a really good bang for your buck. So now let's look at the vegetables, the plant-based, right? P pumpkin seeds is again the winner, right? Pumpkin seeds has the trypt highest tryptophan and magnesium at 156 milligrams in one ounce. Chia seeds, one ounce, 111 milligrams. Almonds dry roasted have 80 milligrams of one ounce of this. Spinach boiled, half a cup is 78 milligrams. Cashews roasted, uh, one ounce, 74 milligrams. Peanuts dry roasted, a quarter of a cup, 63 milligrams of magnesium, okay? Soy milk, one cup of 61 milligrams of magnesium. So it's throw away the cow milk, heat up some soy milk, okay? That's even better because look at cow's milk is only 24 milligrams of magnesium. Soy milk, 61, almost three times more, right? Cooked black beans, 60 milligrams of magnesium. Edamame shelled and cooked, half a cup of that, 50 milligrams of magnesium. Peanut butter, no added sugar, two tablespoons, 49 milligrams of magnesium. And brown, cooked brown rice, 42 milligrams, one cup, 42 milligrams of uh, magnesium. And then oatmeal, instant or prepared, one cup is 36. And a banana, 32 milligrams. So not a lot of fruits, right? Really just one fruit on this list. Mostly nuts are your winners for magnesium. Okay. And nuts and seeds also have oil. So they also will help you with your digestive system at the same time. So if you really want to fix your insomnia problem, and if your problem is really due to magnesium, right? It's really not just, insomnia is never just due to an, one nut nutrient deficiency. It's due to a nutrient deficiency that results in an organ dysfunction. Guess what? These plant-based foods, not only are they rich in magnesium, but they are also helping with restoring your organ function. That's why what we do at our clinic at Achieve Integrative Health, we help all of our patients focus on these to fix the root cause. You hit, you basically, you, you, you get the bang for two bucks, or whatever, the, two birds, one stone, right? Type of situation. You eat these seeds and nuts, you not only get the magnesium, the tryptophan, but you also get new, other nutrients that help you restore your organs that are dysfunctioning, whether it is the kidneys, the liver, the heart, other, every other organ, every organ can affect your sleep. Okay. So this is the root cause. Uh, how to fix a root cause. Now, if you only want short term, again, like I said, you can go to the supplements, right? Magnesium glycinate is going to be your best choice. Could you do both? Absolutely. We do that for our patients as well, right? We give them the magnesium supplement to get them the sleep that they need right now. And that also gives us time and gives them time to implement the dietary changes so they can actually fix the root cause. So that's how you do it with restorative longevity. I'm going to put the links for the original uh, podcast part one and then part two with the, the links to the tryptophan so that you can watch those two um, and, and after you watch this one.